So welcome to the Early Years Insight. This is the first episode, so welcome to all our listeners. I'm Cathy Leatherbarrow from Eden, and today's guest is Heather Clark Kelly from the Sunflower Day Nursery in Partley Bridge. Welcome, Heather. Hello there. Shall we start with community? Yes. Because fundamentally, these little ones, aren't they? They're, we want them to invest in their community. Yeah. So it's it, to me, it's sort of double. I, I see it from two angles, so... Yes, the children you know, very much see themselves as part of their community and that's really important that they know where they're from and they know where they live and they know what's around them. But also it has an opposite effect in that if the community values what you're doing as an mm-hmm. earlier setting, then that really helps you as a, as a business and it raises the profile. And you know, like we mentioned before, staff are really proud to come from that setting because it's got, yeah. already got a high... Um, um, the high representation in in the community. Yeah, that it's sense. well thought. It, it's of. well thought. Of, yeah, yeah. Um, and that it, those two things sort of bounce off each other really, really nicely. Because mm. again, if you're well thought of in the community, then more um, companies and businesses and small people, you know, small businesses in the community, are more likely to help you out as well. Yeah. Um, so, for example, you know, when our children are going for a walk into, you know, into Pateley Bridge where we are. Um, you know, people will come to the shop door and you know wave and you know and they'll be invited in and you know invited into the vegetable store shop to look at the vegetables and giving a little piece of fruit to take away each or whatever and it's it's having that your presence embedded you know in the place that you're, yeah. you're practicing from yeah. and working from um which just makes it be really lovely mm. you know and it, it's it's hard for busy working parents isn't it to oh, goodness, yes. take the time yeah. to really encourage their children to learn about where they live yeah. yeah what's important to them why they live where they live absolutely what goes on yeah totally um and we, we're seeing more of our we've got more full-time children in nursery now than we've ever had before so children that are attending the setting for five days a week more hours than any of our staff do because you know the our staff work you know parts of days yeah like three or four days a week whatever um so we've suddenly realized that actually these children I've got a real big need to go out into the community and you know go to the library and go to the shops and yeah. go to the park and do all those things because they're not getting the opportunity to do that you know with with, with mum or dad at home well, yeah, um, the pressure's on for parents to oh, work isn't that totally totally yeah. um and it's yeah it's a big it's a big thing and we're playing a really big part of their life so if those children know you know where what what is in their town what is in their village um they can talk about it and you know they've got that sense of belonging um, that is really important for, mm. for small people too. So what kind of trips do you do to in, to encourage that and to make it um, part of their holistic development? Yeah, so we were quite, well, I mean, we were an incredibly rural area. Um, you know, we're not particularly on a bus route. I think there's two or three buses a day that we could get on one route out of the, of the town that we're in. Um, so we, we try to do lots of little trips out we've organized swimming lessons and um, we're very lucky that we're next to the local swimming pool um, oh, so fabulous. the children the our preschoolers go swimming twice a week and um, they, well they, they go individually once a week but they've got the you know the option of coming we take them twice a week if that makes sense um and that's a really big thing again because parents you know if you're working full-time you don't get a chance to go and have a splash around lunch you know during the yeah. week or whatever um and that's been a really great thing yeah and and also swimming's not just about splashing around and having fun in the water is it it's um no it's 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 a skill it's a life skill people are getting used to going out as part of a group um they're looking after their belongings they're getting changed Mm. and a lot of of self-care is in there again making links up at the swimming pool so on um, a wednesday in particular the group of ladies that's in the pool before our children are doing um i think it's called pool arties um, like a into Pilates, it's Pilates. Oh, so um, like a water yoga yeah, exercise yeah. class. Yes, yeah. Um, so as you know, as they're getting out, um, you know, our children are coming in and they're recognising them. But again, that's building that link within the community mm. because those those ladies, you know, they they often come up to me in the street and oh, I saw your little ones that's women, they're so well behaved and da da da. And it's just it is it's lovely. Um, we were again really lucky but lots of green spaces around where we are and um, there's a millennium park and it's got big willow weavings and a pond and um, so again in the summer we've been able to go pond dipping um in winter just running around the, it's a big like caterpillar that's been weaved out of willow um but again going we've got a, a very small volunteer run library in the town as well and um, so going down to the library and um, going down to the shop to buy snack you know all those little bits it doesn't have to be 
a full on outing. You know, it can be yeah. a few children going out with a couple of members of staff. And that's um, what makes the community more uh, absolutely knowledgeable absolutely. and prevalent, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. And trying to get the community involved. So, you know, really recently we had um, Burns Night, didn't we? A couple of weeks yes. ago. So we put out a, a request to see if anybody locally played the bagpipes because we thought that would be a lovely thing for the children to see. Thankfully they didn't, but we did have a lady, one of our mummies who played the fiddle. Oh, okay. And um, so she came in and played some Scottish reels for us and the children did some Scottish dance. Oh, how lovely. But again, you know, that was something that we could share with the community. Um, we've got a Facebook page and we are quite active on that. We don't put any pictures of the children on our yeah. Facebook page at all. But again, the community knowing that we're doing things like that, um, it, it, you know, it's, it's really lovely. It's and really do you have lovely. any of them approach you? to you know <laughs> join in on a joint yeah. venture and um, we get lots of people asking if we would like things it's from the little um guy who lives up the, up the road who's got a cat and he always brings his old cat food boxes down for us to you know to do jump meddling things yeah. like that yes yeah we've got another lady that brings his egg boxes lots of egg boxes um we have you know, we put a plea on our facebook page for example for spare trousers and pants and socks and things and we got bundles and inundated bundles. Yeah, by that so people are really invested oh no, no more recently as well we did um, a fundraiser for children in need and we did a, a cake storm in the nursery but we ran a raffle as well and loads of the local businesses all gave you know, vouchers and things like that for our oh that's nice we ended up raising you know over a thousand pounds for wow, children in need really a very good. small nursery um, and but it, again it was a community yeah. venture small businesses particularly I presume that would be very hard for them to donate oh, a, um, totally. Totally. You know, so a prize were, at the moment. Sure we were really reciprocal. So again, give them mm. space on our Facebook page, you know, to say what they've done. Mm. Um, and yeah, it was just, it was lovely. It was, it was really lovely. And it's, we are, again, the community where we live is, is very community. So mm -hmm. we are really lucky. Yes, I presume um, then you don't need to cover the typical topic about... Um, the community because it's embedded oh, yeah. into yeah absolutely daily nursery yeah. life yeah um lots of our like when we've got pre-reading um in our preschool room um our staff have gone out and taken photographs for example yeah. of shop signs in the village so it's really you know, recognizable font and print yeah absolutely so then you know they're saying can you read and they're looking at the sign it says spa and they're like that's you know it's spa it's the spa and it's yeah. like, you can read and because they're knowing the shape of it yeah it makes sense um but again, you know, it's knowing that it's it's there. Again, with our community, things like last night we had a staff meeting. So we use our local pizza shop, for example, to go and get pizzas for the staff meeting for the staff. So, you know, we want those businesses to know that we're supporting them, you know, locally yeah. as well. Um, I'm just trying to do the various bits, really. But again, with the children, you know, they, they, they're very protective about the park. I mean, that's my park. And everyone, that's my park it's my park and it's my park you know they they, they recognize that they've got the same it's shared familiar space and things like the vets if you go to our local vets there's a big um canvas mural on the wall um that the children painted many years ago i went in the other day it's still, still there in, yeah it must be like 18 years ago i think we painted it oh that's it's nice still there on the wall. um looking again, a bit faded maybe. a bit faded but a little sign <laughs> still that says you know some flowers day nursery um but yeah it's, it's lovely you know and it's things oh. like that that just you know if the children can have those things that are in common with other children. Yeah, because you know, I know there was a lot of media um, attention to um, early years children going into local care homes, wasn't there? Right. Have you ever done? Have you ever done that? Oh, so I have, yes, yes. I have experienced that myself. Yeah. Um, so in our other setting, we, we used to have another nursery up in North Allerton, and that was right next to a care home. So they did mm. they did do that quite frequently. We don't have a care home at all in um, Paint the Bridge anymore. Yeah. We used to we shut down about six seven years ago so previously we did it like christmas songs and things like yeah. that um but it, i think that is cross-generational learning is so important yeah and if we had the opportunity to do that that would definitely be something what, what did you find that the children benefited from that that they wouldn't necessarily get I think from the settings some, or... sometimes a lot of children don't have um you know easy access to grandparents mm. and just just children that are adults who've got different life experiences yeah um it, it singing along you know people who have got time to stop and speak to them as well yeah you know it's a, it's, a, it's a different it's a different thing you know it's, it's not an adult language. passing by and saying hello is it they yeah want no, to, no they're in bed. they want to engage yeah. don't certainly they? some of the pictures that i've seen you know in nursery world i magazine about you know settings mm. that have fundamentally endorsed that yeah i think it's it's amazing you know those opportunities it just develops understanding doesn't it and um understanding of different people different ways of life 
different aspects, different points of view, you know, all those and things. Time. And, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's time. and I don't know if you've seen the pictures as well, of some of the, you know, the older ladies in particular holding on to babies, you know, giving them a cuddle, and that must be so yeah. powerful for them as yeah. adults, you know, remembering because their I, I know um, dolls are used with mm. dementia. Yes, um, yeah. yeah. Adults, aren't they? Because yeah. they bring a lot of comfort and yeah. no. calmness. And that must be such a lovely, you know, a lovely, lovely thing um, to be able to... You know, do that, and that's something. You know, if we had the opportunity, we definitely would um, explore that further. Um, one of the big things as well we do in our village, we've got, well, I'd say, village town. It is. It's one of those medium, medium, small, medium size. Yeah, a small town. Um, but we've got a big agricultural show each year. Oh, nice! So about 10, 12 years ago, we were approached by the show to ask if we would provide um, the family facilities if you like and we've gone from being in a really sort of small tent to having you know 12 years later this huge marquee um that they provide for us but we provide you know activities nappy changing area we sell um, healthy pat lunches because you know at agricultural shows quite often it is you know chips burgers yeah your burger vans and, and so we yeah. do like healthy pat lunches from there but again it's such an opportunity for families um, who've been with us 10, 20 years ago to come back. To revisit. Yeah, because they know we're going to be there every year. Um, and it, that, again, it, it's just the way that the nursery, you know, is embedded in the community. Well, it's part of their family, isn't oh, it? Totally, it's totally. Part of that, yeah. you know, it's like my children are 13 and 16. Yeah. And they are still in touch with the, with the adults yes. that looked after yeah. them as being... Yeah little it's really you know, interesting it's, you should say that yeah actually. and it's they are part of oh it's, it's they are part of their history their life it? story yeah. you know and they yeah. think back very fondly of them yeah and, you know and consider them to be you know really happy important adults within their childhood totally we, we've got um the, just just yesterday we had one girl who's come back to do two days work experience from her sixth form her sixth form school and then we had three of our the year eight year nine um girls from the high school next door come to do their dv um volunteer experience with us oh, as well that's nice. and so to have four of them back in the building who all you know had attended nursery you know a few years ago well 10 12 years ago. it feels only a few years ago doesn't it, really it? <laughs> does, um which is just amazing um you know we've got to a point now where we've employed a couple of our old children you know that's that were nice. there when we first opened um, and certainly some as well whose children are coming back to us, it, starting with us, you know, mm. when, from when they were, you know, the, our children's children, if that makes sense. And yes, um, yeah, yeah. It is. It's, it, it's a, like such a sense of joy that we've got, you know, that, re- that returning story, nice, if it? that makes sense. Because, with so many yeah, families. Yeah, because you've valued a lot into that family as well, haven't you? Well, you've invested often, a lot. Yeah, absolutely. And and we're the it's first a big, people many people talk yeah. to on the morning. Your first adult that yeah. conversation that a parent might have had that morning, and um, you know it's a big part of their lives. You know, and probably the adult that you know that they could say nothing to if needed, mm. and also cry on if oh, they needed. Very yeah. many mornings, very many mornings. It's um, you know, it's such it's not a lot to be underestimated, really, especially with families that don't have um, you know, close family close mm. by. You know, we are that extended family. Yeah, you know, we, we're people that can help out at the last minute. Um, you know, we're there through people's joys, you know, through births and marriages and house moves, but also through really sad times as well, yeah. you know, and supporting families, um, you know, through, through losses and marriage breakdowns and, you know, illnesses and all those things. Yeah. You know, and we, we talk about that, you know, nursery is a community within itself, so it's almost like a community within mm. a community. Um, you know, we open, uh, open our arms and welcome sunflowers families, you know, you become a family, part of a big family, don't you, the nursery yes, that you work yeah. in. Um, and it's really important, you know, it's really important to get it right um, and just have that balance between, you know, being the educator, being the carer, but also being that support network, yeah. you know, for the family. Element of counselling in with early years practitioners, huge, isn't it? Huge, there? huge amount. Yeah. I mean, something I, I've had to hold dear for myself and, you know, I'd say with our team as well, you know, whilst we're all working really hard to support the families, none of us should be working harder than the family is themselves, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. And if that balance shifts, then that's when we've sort of got to stop and address the situation a little mm. bit because we don't want to hold these families hostage, you know, where they are. They've got to be able to move on, you know, and grow as yeah, well. Yeah, and they've got to make their own mistakes oh, as well, totally. haven't they? Totally. Whether that's, you know, their yeah. 
their life as an individual or their life as a family yeah. and ups and downs and mm-hmm. doesn't come with a guidebook, no, does it, in a right got, and wrong oh, way. Yeah, we've all got um, those families that we take home with, the, with us, mm. if that makes sense in our head, and children that we worry about, you know, we're going to sleep. Sometimes the last thought that we've had is of a child that you know is struggling at home or a family that you know is struggling at home. And the first thought when you wake up is that, oh gosh, I hope they're coming in today. I hope they've had breakfast. Yeah. I hope they're, you know, able to get there. I hope everything's gone okay. And um, you've always got those families that you're worrying about, you know, within, within your head, if that makes sense, that you carry with you. Um, and again, you know, going back to the community, that's a really tricky thing as well, because quite often from a confidentiality point of view you know you will get lots of people in the community coming to you and saying oh you know how so and so I hear they're having a hard time or my grandchild comes to you or wasn't it you know who, who is it that bit my son you know da, da, da. and it's about having that you know that that, that level of confidenti- yeah. confidentiality and professionalism as well because whilst you're in a very close-knit community people within that community need to know that you are professional and need to know that you're able to maintain confidentiality and need to know that you're not going to be chat, 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 chatting yeah. about, you know, what the very exciting things sometimes you've found out. Um, but it's, yeah, it, it's it's all those things very together. Very exciting oh, things. Sometimes, yes. It's, 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 it's the first people to hear something, and you, you know, really? You know, you sat, sat on a big, exciting, juicy bit of gossip that you cannot share with anybody. But that's part of being a human as well, isn't it? <laughs> it is, it is. It's never. never. Yes. Um, but yeah, it's you know it's a really privileged role, isn't it? It's really privileged, but again, it's it's high pressure, and it's not to be underestimated. Yeah. You know, but also, that right. gives you know families confidence, doesn't it? That you know that you're respectful oh, as well, absolutely. isn't it? To absolutely. Their individual needs, wishes, and wants, and, yeah. and ultimately, you're going to protect yeah. that, that child. Yeah. You know, um, it, it goes both ways, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, if you've got that respect for them, then they're going to have that respect back. Yeah, them, absolutely. And that's the same, I think, with anything. So I think we've, yeah. other people I think we've all been there, haven't we? We all want to know who that child was that scratched your daughter oh, or your son's yes. finger free, arm they tell, or whatever. They tell them, you know, they totally yeah, they tell do, them. They? But again, yeah, Johnny scratched yeah. me today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it totally is how you, you know, that professional stance that you yeah, take. Yeah, and how it's do, approached. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, I just often just smile at the parents and, you know, you know, I can't tell you that, you know, because they, they know, yeah. they, they know that they can't, you know, you know, I can't discuss that, you know, and certainly, you know, with staff who maybe babysit and things like that, that's one of the big things that we tell them and when we're, they're supporting mm. the families that they're babysitting, so we're supporting the staff when they're going to families that they're babysitting for. I always say, do you think, do you find that works quite well? Because I know a lot of settings don't allow the yeah. staff to do you know yeah, work so, for families outside yeah for us it does um you know again was uh, in early years career is not a highly profitable yeah. career so you know if they can bolster their income a little bit with a mm. bit of extra babysitting we're not going to stop you know staff yeah. from doing that and it's the same way that parents will often ask staff because these staff know their children yeah. you know they know they're getting a qualified member of staff they know they've got a member of staff with a first aid certificate you know, qualification and ultimately an adult that knows their child and, well and knows their child it? really well so we have a, a babysitting policy that we give out to parents mm-hmm. and that we give out to staff and that just very clearly lineates who you know they're then they're babysitting as individuals they're not babysitting as part of our company and um, they're not being employed by us whilst they're babysitting um, however, there is an element of confidentiality. You know, you mustn't please don't ask the staff awful, awkward questions because you know they're not going to answer them, kind of thing. Um, and explain to the staff as well that you know just just get a, a blanket answer. So, you know, I'm sorry, I can't speak about that yeah. because ultimately that's going to breed the respect back again that they know Absolutely. they're not going to be chattering about. Yeah, you know, and the, you know they're going very pro- privileged to be able to have such a highly qualified oh, absolutely. babysitter. Yeah, well. and they respect that as well. I think. Um, we always have a notebook, you know, so we know which staff are babysitting for which families. So from that safeguarding point mm-hmm. of view, you know, it's a very open book. It's not, you know, nothing is done secretly, if that makes sense. Um, and it's part of being a professional member of staff. It's, it's such a big shady area, isn't it? Because, you know, in a school, a teacher wouldn't mm-hmm. babysit for, you know, one of their no. pupils because that would be seen as really, yeah. you know, crossing a boundary. Um, but again, I think in early years... The boundary's already been crossed because you are dealing with such intimate care needs. Mm-hmm. Um, you, 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 the staff are professionals, and as long as they're going about every aspect of their life, you know, as professionals, then they, they're doing the right thing. You know, they've got that safeguarding training. They know yeah. what to do and how to carry themselves. Um, 
But again, from the parents' point of view, they've got a DBS check, qualified member of staff, you know, with a first aid certificate and intimate knowledge of their child. So, you know, it's a good win, really, for them, it's isn't it? It's a position. Yeah, absolutely. So do you have many farms in your area? Do you have links with farmers for... Yes. Yeah, yeah, we've had children turning up on quad bikes, to children turning no up in tractors way. to nursery. Oh, yes. Um, we have parents who request more time for their children, say at lambing time and things like that. They need more, more, you know, more sessions for their children. Um, How cool is that, turning up to nursery on a tractor? Oh, coolest kids ever. Coolest wow. kids ever. Wow. Yeah, yeah. The kudos in nursery goes very high if you turned up on a tractor. It's a very important moment in the child's life. Gosh, yeah, it's quite exciting actually as well. Um, where we are, so literally, we're in the Nidderdale Valley, and um, so directly opposite nursery, you've just got rolling hills, um, because we're sort of in the bottom of the valley, and it's like three fields worth of farmable land. So, two, three times a year, we've just got tractors whizzing up and down, you know, cutting the grass, baling the hay. Um, the children, we don't have to do anything on those days. The children will actually get a chair and just sit in front of the window watching the tractors. They think it's the best thing ever. Um, it leads, and it is. You know, completely. It feeds into so much as well, you know. So a lot of our play, you know, is based around wood tractors. We had one little boy years ago that used to do silaging, um, not silaging, muck spreading in our garden at nursery. And it was just that it consisted of just getting big buckets full of mud chucking it everywhere that he you know that he could oh, you know the wall was fabulous. covered in mud, but it made complete sense to him he was you know he was that, spreading that is um, fabulous yeah no so farming is a big part um presents its challenges as well so again Nidderdale in historically has always had lots of families um where you know families on this farm here um grandparents on this farm brothers on this farm so they've had a lot of extended care within the area um but recently you know, a lot of those farms are being sold and we tend to get families moving in and wanting the country life, that okay. makes sense. So buying the farm building as a house and not as a working farm, but as a, you know, yeah. rural house with a big garden, whatever. Um, there's, lots of, there's lots of shows um, and celebrities doing that at oh, the moment, isn't totally, it? They're making it totally. very appealing. Yeah, but there's a, it's a real, it's quite isolating. Mm. So quite often if you've got this house that's sold for hundreds of thousands of pounds, quite often to be able to afford that lifestyle one parent is working away and um, you're commuting yeah. maybe coming back at a weekend and then you've got a very isolated parent alone um in that that big house with no close friends or family around them because they've moved to this area um you know for that idyllic lifestyle which sometimes can end up being quite lonely um so we've got a huge amount of parents that sort of fall into that category so we oh. really took stock you know of the way that we offer support to families um and what we could offer, you know, in terms of extra support, not just for children, but for parents as well. And, you know, we started to try and make um, parents groups where parents could get together for chats and we organised like meals out for mums and dads that they could go to, to meet other mums and dads, if that makes sense as well. Oh. Um, we made sure that on our newsletters, we just had like a section that had, you know, phone numbers for like the Samaritans and Mind and, you know, different organisations that people could ring to so it was a bit of a sticking plaster in some respects but we knew we had to do something had to acknowledge it yeah, to, to just change the way um that we were and do you feel that has had an impact i, I feel it did then covid struck and a lot of the things that we'd worked hard to achieve sort of fell away again if that makes sense because we didn't well, have the everybody became isolated yeah, didn't they yeah and, and i presume that affected your community mm, quite heavily but, yeah very much i mean in, in quite a good way because lots of people became very community minded yeah um, in lot, there were lots of lots of small businesses all doing their best to survive so they all came up with these really funky different ways that they could help you know different families and things like that and get their what they were selling out there so there was one lady who'd been really heavily involved in our local um, um Oh my goodness! Outdoor pursuit centre. Oh um, right. And with all different things. So she's a very active lady. She took to delivering people shopping on her bike. Um, so she got a key trailer for a bike, and she was, you know, pedalling along, delivering people shopping from the local shops. Early delivery, yeah, that absolutely. isn't it? Yeah. So it kept her very active, um, but again, gave that lifeline to people that were out in the you know different places. Um, but well, yeah, probably so, gave her a lot. Oh, didn't huge, it? Huge. As in, yeah. You know, yeah. her own mental well-being yeah. at I, a tough yeah. time. I think a lot of people who were very active with helping out were 
often active because they knew they needed it too, if that makes sense. Mm. So it was like a very reciprocal help that, you know, people were giving and getting. Mm. Um, but yeah, yeah, so we do need to sort of make amends really with the, the journey that we've made with, you know, supporting parental mental health mm. in the community. Um, but it's something that we're still aware of. So, you know, if we have got parents who are struggling, we always make sure one of us is available in the morning just to be able to usher them into the office with a cup of tea. Yeah. Do you find you more receptive to identifying parents that are struggling? Oh, absolutely, now? yeah. Yeah, we always take a step back and just think, actually, why is that mum getting upset that we've lost that child's vest? What's, you know, what's going yeah. on? And it's actually, let's look at the bigger picture, you know. It's not the best. It's not, it's not the best. No. Um, so, yeah, it's, it, it is something that we, you know, we want to be a caring nursery you know if I want mm. to be something for the children but also for the parents as well um, and again like we've said you know childcare staff are the first line staff so you see, you're the first person to see somebody you know on a morning the first adult mm. conversation you might be the last adult conversation or a night time you know when they pick their child up to um, so you've got to be just there and checking mm. in and because ultimately your priority is the child yeah, isn't it absolutely. And, and to make that child the priority you've got to have happy parents as well yeah. everything yeah. around them has got to be yeah. working well yeah. um, or working well enough yeah, yeah. we all yeah. have our bad days but it's got to be working well enough that that child can is, thrive can thrive and develop yeah. Yeah. Um, have you ever met anybody in early years who's thought I'm going to get into early years because I'm going to earn a lot of money and that's my motive no absolutely <laughs> not great a motivation absolutely you know? <laughs> not I think you can you either oh. you can either work in early years or you can't yeah and you, you, you do it because you love it. <laughs> you, you've got a real fond interest in it, and you yeah, enjoy it. Yeah. You certainly don't do it for the money. No, no. Hence, just... probably why all these good practitioners that we're coming across at the moment are jumping onto QTS mm. um, and doing PGCs and things mm. like that. Mm. To um, because yeah. at the end of the day, we've all got to make a wage, oh, and totally. a salary, and totally. support. But yeah, it's a just family. A, yeah, yeah, just a crackers, crackers thing. It's just yeah. But these are our most precious people of oh, our society. 100%. And it's that, that start, isn't it, in life? And it's, um, yeah. Well, that concludes today's episode. Thank you, Heather, for your time. And we look forward to having you back on sometime. No problem. It's been a pleasure. Mm-hmm.